Radiating from the heart of America and stretching from coast to coast and border to border, welcome to On Radio, the wireless industry's weekly download coming straight from the builders and newsmakers of everything wireless. Your host is Jim Tracy, and this is On Radio. On Radio, wireless family, welcome. We're going to have an incredible show today. We have a terrific guest. Uh, the wireless world is interested in health, and if they're not, they should be. And so we're going to go a little bit in that direction. We're going to have a chat today with Dr. Jamie Bott. And Jamie has lots of, like, the coolest resume-ish things that you'll ever see. Um, the reason that I know her is her partner, a.k.a. the chicken, is Daniel Ross, MD. And he's too scared to come <laughs> on our podcast. So he offered you up as a sacrificial lamb, <laughs> Jamie Welcome, right. Dr. Jamie Fott, MD. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> I'm going to tell Dr. Right. Ross you certainly missed out. <laughs> All right. So um, you are um, the medical director at Appleton Medical Clinic. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, yes. Yeah. So Appleton Clinics is a primary care clinic in Eagle, Idaho. We opened in October of 2018. And it's a little bit different from the traditional model in that it's a membership base. Um, and so that means it's $99 a month. Uh, and first two kids are free. Uh, and what comes with that is your annual wellness exam for women pap smears, your annual blood work. Um, and anytime you come into the clinic, there's no co-pays or additional fees. Um, we yeah. do have a small in-house pharmacy. Uh, we're also able to do lab work, EKGs, um, hearing tests, that sort of thing. So your difference is more that you focus on staying well instead of recovering with people who are like already over the edge of sickness, right? Right. I do think that the direct primary care model, there's data that shows that um, this model uh, is affordable and it also keeps has really good results in keeping people out of the hospital. Um, it's because yeah. people can, one, uh, the affordability, but then also have great access to care. And so I don't know if you've tried to get into a doctor's office, but it can take months. And, um, you know, if you're not feeling well, you don't need an appointment in two months, you need an appointment today. And so that's something that this model really helps get people in be seen when they need to be seen to avoid the hospital. But then you're right, like, because it is so accessible, you can get in to prevent um, and to stay healthy so that you're we're tackling or addressing things as they come up um, or before they come up rather than uh, when things have been going on for months and months. Yeah, before you're over the hill, <laughs> like me, I'm kind no. of over the hill. But um, <laughs> so one of the things that I found fascinating uh, about you is you, when I look at your resume, um, you took a very circuitous path to get to Eagle, Idaho. Tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, right. I'm from, um, I grew up in Denver, Colorado. And uh, from there, I went to the East Coast for undergrad at the University of Virginia. Uh, and at which point I decided I wanted to go to medical school. And um Interestingly, I went to the University of Sydney in Australia, which was an awesome experience. I lived in Australia for four years, um, came back to the U.S. for residency. I was in Montana, which was also a wonderful experience, back to Colorado, um, into the mountains of Colorado, and then out to Idaho. So I definitely um, am enjoying um, the, a similar like climate and outdoor uh, like atmosphere that is here in Idaho. So if I follow that path, it's Colorado, mm -hmm. Virginia, mm -hmm. uh -huh. Australia, Montana, mm -hmm. Idaho. Mm -hmm. You're not getting Lenny, yeah. any grass girl under your feet, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I do like to travel and see new places and um, explore, you know, more different challenges. So, yeah. That's really awesome. So tell us a little bit about why would you go to medical school in Australia? Um, I was looking at, 
you know, medical school is competitive and often you may end up in an area where you are far from family or supports or where you don't not particularly want to live. And a family friend had recently done a sabbatical year in Australia at the Westmead Children's Hospital and really was impressed with the resident, uh, the medical students there. And so had made a recommendation uh, to me that I check it out and you know, kind of with the nudge too of during my school breaks, I'd be able to travel uh, throughout Australia and um, do, yeah, the traveling that I love to do. Uh, and when I was there, I, I was fortunate to ha live in Sydney for two years. I lived in Canberra for two years and I did a, a rotation in the outback in Alice Springs. And that was um, with the Royal Flying Doctor Service. It was really quite um, a unique experience and I was really happy to have that. Yeah. Oh, wow. So you did your residency kind of outback, <laughs> literally. Yeah, the medical, yeah, some medical training. Yeah, we'd fly in um, on a small plane. We had to wait for the wild camels to leave the um, to leave the runway, and we set up a medical clinic in the Aboriginal community there. Wow, that's awesome. So um, the tower climbers that, that, that work with us um, – we, we look at them as kind of industrial athletes. And as industrial athletes, like they go up in the mountains like you would. Sometimes you take a snowcat or uh, some other form of four-wheel drive outback type uh, transportation to get there. And then, and then they climb. And they climb, mm -hmm. you know, somewhere between 100 and 500 feet vertically. And so they wow. really truly are industrial athletes. Why would they listen to an Aborigine seeking doctor for any health information? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we're living in a time where um, we see that the rates of obesity and diabetes are on the rise. Um, heart disease is still um, the number one killer in the U.S. And so I do think we need and, and being so active in a job like that with lots of um, uh, strains, I, uh, cardiovascularly as well as muscle. I mean, you just want to be fit for that job to stay safe. Um, but also, you know, spending time with your family and having a long and healthy life. I do think um, we need to kind of shift our focus, I, I think, as a society and culture um, and looking at ways to um, stay not only like healthy, prevent disease, but also like enjoy our lives and feel you know, full of energy and vigor and, and, and to um, be around for our family as well. Yeah, perfect. So um, when, when we talk about you, you have some street credibility as an athlete yourself, um, and you're kind of shy about it, but you are a runner and a climber and all that kind of stuff, aren't you? Uh, yes, I like to, I like to be outside. Trail running is probably one of my passions, I find it um, good for, well, just my, you know, maintaining being in shape, but also just like mental health. I find that um, good for me. Um, I also like to play soccer uh, and ride my bike, and this is a great place to do it. All right. Awesome. So uh, when we talk about trail running, um, you just completed a race down in Utah. Yes. And mm -hmm. you didn't like say, hey, I'm going to go do a 5K or I'm going to go do a 10K. You said, I'm going to do a mountain 30K. How did that go right. for you? <laughs> it was great. It was really, um, it was a fun, a fun race. It was at Bryce Canyon um, in Southern Utah. So it was beautiful. Um, it was a really good um, energy uh, vibe there. Um, it was hard. We had uh, 3,000 of elevation gain um, in the run, but um, it was, I, I went with friends, so it was a good time. You went, so this is like 20 miles, right? Yeah, it was a 30 K. So it ended up being, yeah, 19.5 miles. So yeah, 20 miles. Oh, yeah. only 19 and a half miles uphill <laughs> on a mountain right. trail. Are you kidding right. me? And, and so how was your <laughs> result? Were you happy? Yeah, um, yeah, it went really well. I did. I uh, I was fourth place for my age. Um, so oh my god! Eight, wow. Eighteen women. Yeah, that's really nice. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I was happy with. So the for result. the rest um, of us, they would clock us with a calendar. 
<laughs> Fourth place. That's incredible. And then also, so when you're done trail running, you get off a bike, you, you get on a bike or you play soccer. So you're not an industrial athlete. You're a true athlete, aren't you? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I imagine it would be hard if your everyday um, job was a physical um, to add that into your to your life um, <laughs> as a hobby as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm I, I'm I'm the first one here to salute you, saying, "Hey, I did a 5K uh, train race, and I'm not doing a 30K. Ain't gonna happen." But I salute you. Uh -huh. Anybody who does that is an incredible athlete, especially nailing down fourth place in your age group. That's pretty incredible. <laughs> so, did you enjoy your folks, 5K? Oh, go, sorry. Uh, did you I, enjoy I, your 5K? I loved 5K? hating every minute of it. Uh huh. Right. Yeah, I love hating every minute of it. <laughs> uh -huh. I know it usually um, is a good feeling at the end. Uh -huh. I like it best when it's over. Yeah. 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 So uh, talk to us a little bit. Our folks go out on the road and they spend an incredible amount of time on the road. And, uh, and there's some issues that come up that we want you to talk about and address and food and diet kind of being the first one of them you understand a little bit about, about food and diet? Talk to us a bit about your encouragement to them. Right. Um, well, I think one of the things I think just to acknowledge up front is um, how physically challenging that job is. And, um, and then being on the road adds another stressor, um, a component of stress to that and not sleeping in your own bed and maybe having sleep being compromised. Um, and so I think when your body's under those kind of demands that it's best to try and fuel it to, so it can perform its best as well as to provide you with enough energy um, to feel good while you're doing it as well as safe. So, um, and I think traveling is, is hard to maintain um, a healthy diet. We talked um, at some point about just talking or looking at whether that's eating out at restaurants and making some healthy choices, or if you're packing a lunch for the road, um, being able to bring a cooler or to find some healthy options at, for example, grocery stores where they have the packaged vegetables or salads, or you can grab fruit, um, little containers of hummus or some healthier options than a convenience store um, and just grabbing candy bars or granola bars. And anything is better than McDonald's. <laughs> right, right. I think it, as much of like real food, I try and think about it as real food. Um, I think it, the more you can get of that and getting into the, the fruits and vegetables is the way to go. But I think it's about, you do have to plan a little bit ahead. I mean, you have to want, number one, like be intentional about eating healthy when you're on the road um, and then planning a little bit ahead, whether Again, that's packing a cooler or, you know, taking a look at the grocery store and kind of thinking ahead of time, like what you might eat when you are, when you are on the road. Awesome. And then two, uh, even when you're out, uh, out and about uh, climbing towers in this physical occupation, exercise still becomes a really important part of a routine, doesn't it? Yeah, I think exercise um I mean, there are studies that show even from like a mental health standpoint, like managing anxiety or depression or managing stress that exercise being out, whether it's outside or um, you get a good like endorphin release and dopamine release when you exercise. And so it can just help with your overall mood. It can improve sleep um, as well as like maintaining fitness. So um, I think everyone's going to be a little bit different. Um, some people I think who have physically demanding jobs find it helpful to get a little bit of exercise, whether that's weightlifting or cardiovascular, you know, aerobic type exercise in the morning before their day starts. Or maybe it's at the end of the day as like um, sometimes a nice transition to like leave your work problems behind if you have a little time to exercise before going home with the family. Um, so uh, people are a little different, but I think with a little bit of thought, you can figure out like what works best for you or what really felt good. You don't have to keep up with anything that doesn't feel good, but just keeping those two, maybe those two time frames are in mind, um, really work well for people. 
For sure. Even if you're going back to a hotel, go out and take a walk just to mm-hmm. clear your mind and get some time away from your teammates. Let them uh, let them do what they're yeah. going to do and just get away and just take a little walk. So that's right. Uh, that that is. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, um, I was going to say another thing to easily bring with you is um, like a jump rope. Um, that might be a way to get a little bit of cardiovascular exercise, get away from the team a little bit, listen to some music, put on your headphones and just um, jump rope for a little bit. Or or like you said, a walk. I think all those are really reasonable. There are even some, you know, gyms that are like nationwide that appeal to some people. Um, I don't know all of them, but like Planet Fitness or Anytime Fitness. If you have a membership in one of those gyms, when you're on the road, you're you have access to to those other to the other gyms and other cities. And so um, that might appeal to someone, especially if you're going back to the same place on a, on a kind of a, a routine pattern. What a great idea. And so um, I just want to encourage all the folks out there who are listening, whatever part of that wireless ecosystem that you're in, that Dr. Jamie Falk came to you and encouraged you and gave you knowledge and information, and you should know enough to eat well, sleep enough and get some exercise even when you're out on the road. So I'd like to say thank you for stopping by on radio. Congratulations on nailing it on your run, on your trail race thank, in Utah. Thank you. And uh, you're welcome. You're welcome to the On Radio podcast anytime. And as always, oh, folks, thanks, Jim. let's remember, we're going to choose safety today. This is Jim with Dr. Jimmy Fox, and we are out. Thanks for tuning in today and join us every week Tell your people to listen in and subscribe to On Radio, the voice of everything wireless.